Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So I'm gonna see if we can get this oil pan and rear main seal on this engine, and then we'll have the bottom of this engine buttoned up, and we'll be ready to get the heads, cam towers on, and then start looking at the inner timing cover. So I have taken the oil pan inside, washed it out real good with some Dawn dishwashing detergent. Uh, they acid washed it for me at the machine shop and got all the crud and everything off of it um, But I think he was just in a hurry or whatever to get my head and pan back to me And he said make sure because it's just acid washed to take it home wash it out real good with some Dawn dishwashing detergent And water and let it dry so I've done that um, This is the rear main oil seal piece um, I've popped the rear the old rear main oil seal out and um, I've just you know gone in here and cleaned the surfaces up real good with some brake clean all the sealing surfaces are nice and clean on this and we're going to install our new seal and put this gasket on and put this piece over the crank and then we'll be ready to get our oil pan put on and bolted on so turn the camera around here and show you what I'm up to Okay, so here is my, uh, I guess the housing that goes over the back of the crankshaft and my old seal that I took out. And we're going to put this new seal in. And now I know just from the way the old one came out that where this kind of ridge is in here with the rubber and the little spring under there, I know that that is going to face inward like that and then basically I'm just going to tap this guy, guy down in here real nice and easy and try to take it in nice and even be sure she's seated all the way and she is not yet <clears throat> alright so now I'm just going to continue to kind of take it down a little at a time here with this socket and just work it in Nice and easy with it. Yeah, we're all nice. And seated all the way down. All the way around there. That was simple enough. So now we just pretty much take our gasket here. And this bolts on the bottom of the engine. Looks like this gasket could go either way. You can. So now we'll get this over the crankshaft. What I'm going to do is just take a little bit of engine oil, some T1030. I'm just going to put a little bit on the inside of this gasket or this seal, I should say, just to make sure that we don't damage anything as that slides over our crankshaft. All right, this is kind of tricky because the back of the engine stands right here and this piece is going to go in here. So what I'm going to do is just go over that surface with a little brake clean first just to make sure that everything is good and clean on this gasket surface. I don't want any oil leaks back by my transmission. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt to fix later. Although, probably a little easier on this engine than some. So, it looks like there are two uh, pens here to help hold this gasket in place. So, we'll go ahead and put it in place, like so. I'm just going to take, slide this guy on nice and gently, get her lined up. Alright, so now she's in there, let's see, uh, I'll go ahead and get my bolts put on. Uh, I'm sure there's a torque spec for these bolts. There's no way I'm getting my torque wrench down in here, so I'm just going to get them snugged up pretty tight. Alright, so all the bolts for this are all the same size. 
and uh, we're just going to get them started here. Tightened up, I believe they're 10 millimeter. All right, here we go. Let's see if this will do. Thank you, Mark Fox. He sent me this wrench. So now I'm just going to give him a good little tightening, kind of just randomly tighten them down. So that's installed. Now we're ready to work on getting this oil pan installed. Um, however, that's going to require me to climb up in the loft and find all the oil pan bolts. I have four of them that came back from the machine shop. The rest are in a ziplock up in the loft here in the garage. So let me get that pulled down. I've got the oil pan gasket. Here, this just has a direction that it goes. I have to make sure that all the holes line up and it lines up with the dowel pin on either side. You see here is your dowel pin. This just goes right down on here. What I'm going to do is just get a socket like that, kind of gently tap this into place. So that's tapped down there. I'm going to tap this down over here, make sure it's seated. Make sure all the uh, bolt holes seem to line up okay. All looks good to me. So we're ready to get our oil pan put on now. So we got the oil pan, it's all nice and cleaned out. Everything looks good. There's a little drop of oil in it. That's fine. So, I'm going to go ahead and set her down on here. You can, again, locate this with the dowel pins. Hey, for my, uh, for my viewers up north, you can take pride in this motor. Made in Canada. At least the oil pan was. The engines were assembled in, in Michigan, but, uh, oil pan must have been made in Canada so I know I've got four bolts that came back from the machine shop I'll get those started on here okay now let me climb up in the loft and find the rest of the bolts all right that was not too bad. I went to my box of bolts and I found a baggy labeled oil pan. It's really a good idea if you're going to be tearing a motor down, especially if it's going to be months before you put it back together. Label your bolts. Alright, so before I tighten this uh, gasket down, I, I want to be sure that my timing cover bolts are going to line up, so I'm just going to stick a couple of kind of screwdrivers in here. Um, heck, one screwdriver is probably good enough, just to make sure that that stays in alignment as I tighten everything down. So, basically there's no real torque sequence here, it gives you these numbers, but that's just where the bolts are and what you tighten them to. There's no angle measurements, thank goodness. Um, I thought it was interesting. Uh, before, when I destroyed my oil pan, I put a new gasket on. But it says, inspect the oil pan gasket for damage. Replace only, or replace as necessary. The oil pan gasket is reusable. So it could have saved myself an oil pan gasket when I broke my oil pan. Okay, so I'm just going to go through here and snug up. All these bolts just where they're snug and then we'll torque them.
Okay, so now I am ready to begin my torque sequences on all these guys. I am going to go ahead and tighten up that drain plug so I don't forget later. Oh, that was an oil leak. Lose all my oil and destroy my rebuilt engine. All right, folks. So the oil pan is on. The rear main seal is in. The bottom end's all wrapped up. Um, you know, you probably don't have to torque those oil pan bolts. Probably get them good and snug, and you'll be just fine. That's what I did when I cracked the oil pan on this bad boy and had to replace it in the driveway under the car on jack stands. I didn't get a torque wrench out and try to reach up in all them tight places. But, uh, you know, it's out of the car on an engine stand in a nice warm garage. Why not go ahead and torque it since it's easy to get to and just make it right. Um, you know, your, your critical things you need to torque like rod caps and mains and your cylinder head. And there's other things that aren't so critical, probably. And as you work on engines long enough, you kind of get a feel to how tight certain bolts should probably be. Um, but next, we'll be getting the cylinder head installed, and then after that, the cam towers. And then we'll be ready to put the inner timing cover on and get the timing chains and stuff going. So, uh, bottom end's all wrapped up. It's kind of sad. It's so the last time I'm going to see the bottom end for a while. I hope. <laughs> Unless something goes catastrophically wrong. Right? Um, but it's, it's, you know, if you haven't rebuilt an engine, um, especially in a car that you drive, right? I recommend it if you have the opportunity to. Um, how many people get the opportunity to intimately know the car that they're driving in that way? To actually know how that engine works inside and know how the parts go together and how how many people get to experience the pride of doing something like a big job like this themselves and having it start up and run and being able to drive it every day I mean that's worth more to me than a big car payment and a Mercedes right I, I love uh, you know that I'm gonna know this car inside and out I'm gonna know this engine know that I built it and I'm gonna be able to drive it back and forth to work every day I just that's invaluable to me I love that um, maybe that makes me weird I don't know like uh, you know, I'm a DIYer if I was a mechanic for a living and did this every day I probably wouldn't care you know but um, you know a lot of mechanics that work in shops don't even do this right this is something that like an engine rebuilder would do um, but normally you know in a shop environment you're just swapping an engine because you don't have time to do this kind of job because you gotta get hours built and make money so that's one of the things I love about not doing it for a living and just doing it in my garage is I get to do fun stuff stuff that's fun to me and I get to know my car so anyway happy new year everybody uh, today is New Year's, but it'll be a little bit after New Year's once this video is all edited and gets put out. Um, and I will talk to you all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper. Be happy. Um, go rebuild something. And be frugal.